Hey Nimtax and welcome back. This is Ash from Hin My PC. Today I've got with me a HP Compact Small Form Factor PC, desktop PC. I mean, I'm sure you recognize this. It's quite popular. Um, this belongs to a car mechanic repair business and they've run into a couple of problems. So number one, that when they turn it on, it's stuck on this HP blue logo screen, nothing else, which means right now it's not even posting into um, anything so we can't even go into the BIOS to check what the problem is right and number two they have in there a 500 gigabyte Western Digital Caviar Blue um, hard drive now what happened was I'm gonna come close and show you that they also broke it off now let me see if you can see that let me zoom on there um, if you can see the pin can you see the pin the plastic bits has been snapped off and the pins are all dodgy so obviously when they plug a set of cable in there nothing is coming up and that comes from the hard drive which is currently in the small form factor desktop so someone uh, what they did was they got a different disk drive not this one and uh, they swapped that onto there but still it wasn't working because there's a second problem and so let's let me address this first if you're going to swap the board off a hard drive which is located at the back right you need to make sure you're getting very similar make and model and serial number so for example western digital caviar blue to western digital caviar blue you may take your chance this may work if you get from a different type of uh, disk it probably will not if you're lucky it will so I this one that I had was quite similar so I swapped the chip but still it's not working because there's a second problem and the second problem is when I put the when I turn it on there's a click the uh, I tried this this on a different um, computer and the BIOS doesn't even recognize it so and there's a click which means that the arm which is reading of the disk plate is either stuck or broken or there's some problem now I could physically open it to find out the third problem I should have mentioned this is all their important data including the business data is on this disk and if I physically open this and I do not have a lab which is dust uh, free then I may damage the data or the disk itself so I'm not going to do that and I've advised them already they should consider at this point to go to a proper data recovery center whatever you do if you have physical damage if someone tells you they're going to try and open your disk drive and you have important data on there and they are not a proper lab don't do it if you need to rescue your data of course if you don't really care about your data and you just want to try it and you just want to see if you can get it done and it wouldn't be the end of the world if you don't then by by all means get them to try open it but i don't want to do this i've tried this before for my own disk and it didn't go very well once it did go well other times it did not because you could very easily contaminate the inside environment of the disk drive which should be kept dust uh, free and clean as, as clean as possible so yeah data recovery center is going to charge you up the wazoo to recover your data but here is what the other problem is now people 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 back up back up back up I have I meet so many people especially businesses and I'm not having a, a go specifically at this person this is general across the board they don't back up right they don't understand the importance of backup you have to back up your data because once it's gone it's gone you're not going to get it back it's very difficult either you're going to pay a lot of money to try and recover right from a data recovery center or you're going to have to um what's the other word actually i don't know anyway here's the point now, now the other problem is when you back up the general consensus amongst all it professionals is this you have to back up three different ways right one backup should be kept with you locally one backup should be kept outside which is away from your uh, environment or pc and one other backup as just in case could be anywhere else maybe online okay um a lot of people they also do another problem they do a backup on the same disk and when that disk physically gets damaged then you're screwed okay you can't you can't retrieve that so what you should do, ideally what i do and i will show you later i'll do a full backup tutorial i do one backup 
on a di different drive which is on my PC for a very easy access. The second backup I have is on an external hard drive which I do and I keep that with me, it's mobile all the time. And the third backup is I have a home server which I back up all my stuff and that's kept away from the area of my general computers. Uh, that the, the server one for you guys, for home people, should be something like an online backup or even a friend's computer which you can access because the idea of a backup is for you to be able to access the data without any barriers if and when you need it. If you do a type of backup but the backup is kept inside the computer or it's kept in a SIM card which is in your laptop and that, that laptop gets stolen, then what's the point of the backup, All right? So you need to do three backups, at least two. I would recommend three, but if you can't, at least two and keep the one backup separate from your PC, okay? So let's try and troubleshoot this and see what we can do. Okay, here's the other problem with these HP machines generally. And HP, if you're watching this and if anyone owns a HP or is a fanboy of HP, I'm going to try not to hate too much on HP, but I have to be very, very objective. And I'm going to tell you, I hate HP with a passion, whether it's a laptop or whether it's their desktops. And I'm going to give you the reasons why. Now, this is a HP Compact and this is a very old Dell. It's got DDO2 memory and uh, it, it initially had a Pentium 4, but I've upgraded it to a dual core. And I use this sometimes for my work. Now, um, the problem with HP, we start with the power supply, okay? And this power supply is not a standard power supply form factor. It's not an ATX, it's not even a mini ATX. It's a proprietary design, uh, specifically designed for the HP Compact. So you can't take this power supply and put a different uh, desktop altogether. Um, compared with the Dell, and again, I'm not a fanboy of Dell neither, but at least Dell, in many of their machines, they have kept a very standardized form factor for the components, which means if you have a problem with the power supply, you could just swap that with a different one, a standard size ATX one. Now this one, I can't just get any other type of power supply. It will not fit in. Physically, the form factor doesn't allow me to fit in. Whereas this one is a standard one. This actually costs about 15 pounds. It was an uh, easy swap. And I don't really care if this machine dies. It's a cheap power supply, but I don't really care. But the point is, easily upgradable, not easily upgradable. You have to get the exact same uh, form factor. Second problem. Let's say you could use this power supply, which is a standard one, and uh, kind of modify this case to fit this in. The other problem you'd hit would be, look at their what's supposed to be a either four pin power CPU power plug or eight pin in some motherboards. This is a six pin and the standard one in many is a four pin or in uh, higher end ones or some, some versions you will have eight pin but you can actually disconnect four and, and eight but not a six pin and again this would require weird wiring weird weird wiring for you to be able to fit this into that <laughs> and uh, also, in a standard power supply, you have a 20 plus 4 pin motherboard power connector. So here's the 4 pin, there's a 20. This one hasn't. It's got again this weird other types. I don't even know what they are, right? So you can't. So there you go. If you wanted to take a standard power supply and modify your case to fit that in, that's not going to happen, right? So that's one gripe. Here's, here's the second gripe about HP their motherboard and i hope you can see that i'm going to try to right you have up here uh, pci slots which is weird because on standard motherboards like in these dell ones the pci slots are at the bottom so what that means if this motherboard dies i could probably pick up any different type of motherboard as long as it's, it's a same form factor like uh, I, I would think this is a micro ATX and put in there and Bob's your uncle but here I can't take this and put that there because it will not fit it's designed in a way that it will not allow for any other type of motherboard it's very specific and proprietary to HP now HP this is really mean you're limiting and from a business point of view from a business model I understand this is very um, good money-making system however right you're restricting people that possess or buy your computers to only buying parts for this which means when they do eventually need to repair stuff or upgrade, they're going to find the hard way and they may lose trust in you. 
Now, why doesn't Dell do this? I think maybe Dell does do this on some of their uh, materials, but not on everything. And why doesn't other companies do that? So HP, I'm really sorry. I can be wrong, but this is in my demographic and in my experience of working with HP. And the, your laptops are even worse. Don't even get me started on laptops. So I usually advise people not to buy HP laptops and to stay away from these type of small form factors, desktop computer. Um, HP, I can be corrected. If you want to prove me wrong, then you send me a machine that you think is, uh, by the way, one other argument, if you're going to tell me that this is a low end computer, so your higher tier ones are much better and much more um, customizable and upgradable and more um, modular, then no, because Dell has lower end ones and so do other uh, manufacturers which do have standard parts which you can easily repair and upgrade. So no, that excuse is not valid. So HP, prove me wrong, send me something which is at the lower end, which people can afford and which I can easily repair or swap parts with another PC and get that going. So that was, so, so here's my, my advice, until HP changes their act, stay away from their products. Okay, it's a general advice. And again, I can be proven wrong. If you want to spend extra money uh, getting spare parts, because this, for example, um, you can't, I don't know how much this costs, but you will not find a brand new one anymore. You'll have to get a used one. Whereas with the power supply, you would be able to get a brand new power supply for qu quite cheap. Um, unless maybe, even if you contact HP, I don't know whether they will be able to supply you a new power supply. Even if they do, it will not be 20 pounds. It probably won't even be 30 pounds. It probably be a lot more than that. Anyway, some someone let me know. Right, so now I'm gonna try and troubleshoot this. And if I'm successful, I'm gonna show you how to, what to do to try and fix this problem. The only other solution, which I'm thinking, if it's the motherboard issue, the only other solution would be to take a different HP machine and take the motherboard from there, oops, other way around, and try to swap that in there. And that's the only thing I can think of, which, Incidentally, this one also wasn't working and I can't remember the problem with it. It may be the same problem. HP Compact again. That's been sitting with me for about six months now. I couldn't even be bothered to repair it because I couldn't find a standard motherboard to replace that. But we'll see. Anyway, guys, I'm going to upload the troubleshooting of this and the repair in a different video. If you like this, let me know. And over the next month of June, I may not upload as often as I would want to because I'm going to be quite busy, but I'll be back with you in July. I will make an effort to try and upload at least one video a week this month. Thanks again for watching. This was Ash from Heal My PC. Until next time, peace out.